Hey, hey, it's Andy Anna's here for another episode of Let's Rage Cougs, the unofficial Houston postgame show presented by the Saxinian family. Obviously, big shout out to them for being a primary sponsor for the first five men's basketball postgame shows of the season. And as you see on the screen as well, too, shout out to our other sponsors, Hoop and Holler, the Houston Cougars Micro Collective. They are the entity behind the name, image, and likeness commercials uh, with Star Pizza, which hey, look at that. We have our two sponsors there, uh, right there. And then, of course, a huge shout out to the Fritz Kennel, a family owned and operated business that specializes in dog and cat boarding so without further ado we will get right into it because we are discussing the heels of the houston cougars dominant and when i mean dominant it was a dominant 83 to 45 victory third ranked team in the country continues to look as strong as advertised um this time the at least from the offensive perspective all the story of the game came from Marcus Sasser and Jermon Mark, who, uh, especially in that first half, there was at times where both of those players, it, it didn't seem like they could miss everything they threw. And Jermon Mark, especially, especially uh, he finished with 20, 23 points. It was a career high for him. He looked at the most comfortable I've seen him since. I mean, honestly, Chris, I'm curious to get both of your guys' thoughts on this, but he looked the most comfortable going back to his freshman season before he, he got hit with uh, COVID during that season. But joining me, Chris Garner of the Houston Round Ball Review, day on Dunlap. Chris, I'll toss it over to you first. What were your overall takeaways of Houston's 83-45 to 45 victory over Oral Roberts? Well, first, there were times in the first half that Jermon Mark and Marcus Sasser, each of them were outscoring Oral Roberts. <laughs> I mean, so the Cougs limited Oral Roberts to eight points for like around till that nine-minute mark of the first half. Jermon Mark had like 15. Marcus had 12. So the dominance was there. But we got to talk about it. We touched on it in previous Less Rage Coog shows the balance of this team, the versatility of this team. Tomorrow, Mark, three games into the season, is your third different Coog to, to lead this team in scoring. You mentioned it. Career high, 23 points for him. He shot the ball well, 8 for 12 from the floor. And that's including getting his first shot blocked of the game. And that was it. He was aggressive, made all his free throws. He looks much more comfortable. And then it's, it's just, let's just put it like this, Dayon, Andy, Last game, it was Marcus Sasser didn't do a lot of points scoring. Tonight, Jairus Walker was – he got two early fouls and was pretty much a non-factor. And the Cougs still scored 83 points without Jairus Walker. So the first hill is there. Jamal Shedd, only two points, one for four, but great defense. Another dominant win, another versatile win for the third-ranked team in the country. Three games, like you said, three different leading scores. And like you, we've been saying the first couple of episodes, just – goes into the depth in the different ways they can beat you. And to, but Tremont Mark just looks like himself. Uh, he, he looks 100% back, and, and that's what he is. He's a scorer. He can score on all three levels. He can shoot, but his ability to get inside and create for himself, I, I think that's what sets him apart, and his ability to knock down that mid-range jumper at um, a high efficiency because he was very efficient tonight and um, just very aggressive, very aggressive. And, He's been played really well throughout these first three games, um, just taking away the scoring just with his energy, the way he's rebounding, the way he did deflections, and just competing. But offensively, he, he looks 100% back himself. He looks like the score that he was coming out of high school. I'll, I'll take it from there. But, uh, no, absolutely. And I think going back to what I said at the, at the top of the show, just in terms of his comfort level, um, and it's something that, Chris, um, you were there in, in terms of what Kelvin Sampson said with the game plan. They did a really, really good job of spacing out Oral Roberts and really attacking him uh, with Marcus Sass and Tremont Mark one-on-one. -on -one. And to be quite frank, the Oral Roberts defenders just could not stay in front of him. And, and there was a lot of times where, I mean, Tremont Mark today, he shot six free throws. He was six for six from the free throw line. Again, going back to that freshman season for Mark, that's something that he did really well in early on in his freshman year. And it's something that he excelled in uh, tonight. Really, the defenders couldn't say either whether regarding it was, if it was Mark or Marcus Sasser. And there was a couple of times when, like you mentioned, Dan, pull a jumper. That, that's really kind of the go-to shot that Tromar Mark has. But even Marcus Sasser, he had a couple of different crafty finishes that he was able to just get into the paint. And even though that Oral Roberts had the seven foot five. uh Connor Vanover, Vanover, I'm probably going to be butchering his last name, it seemed like Houston didn't have – Certainly, they weren't trying to get into the paint, and it didn't seem like they had any problems scoring from the paint. Uh, but, Chris, I'd like to get your thoughts on 
another balance attack. And we're going to talk, talk about Terrence Arthur. I got a comment from Corey Miller. But the Cougs made 30 bu buckets tonight out of 58 attempts. Only had six assists. But Coach Sampson said post game, not to expect a lot of assists in this game because their job, their game plan was to beat O. Roberts off the dribble. So that's what they did. They got to the paint. So you don't need a lot of assists when you're penetrating and beating your man off the dribble and getting layups. So that's what they did tonight. Points in the paint, 42-8. 42-8 Cougs points in the paint. So most of those were beating the man off the dribble from the perimeter, getting to the rim, and finishing. 42-8. to eight. That's half their points came in the paint. Man, and Marcus Sasser was on it tonight, too. It, it, I, I seen a, another – step from him in his game uh, another layer that um i could tell he he worked on with his ball handling looks very very crisp he's an even better finisher in the paint to go to your point chris and um one thing that he did really well that i, I like he saw the floor from a point guard perspective really well tonight um, i know the the assist wasn't just high he didn't have a high number of assists but he made some good uh, on time on timely passes to get the ball to the right players in the right time whether they made the hockey assist but he really saw the floor well he really controls the tempo when he was at at the um, on the floor as the uh, primary ball handler i was just very impressed and they do a great job of just developing at all levels i mean jay warren started off um the game really well and um, I know Chris mentioned this earlier, and I was like, I wasn't sure if they're going to go to him on the block. And I got to give that credit because he's definitely working on his game. His footwork is really, really nice the way he he can pivot and get to his strong hand, turn over his right shoulder, finish with the left. And I'm, I'm very impressed that with this win, with this team, and with the coach staff, how they develop every single position. And that's a great lead in, Dayan, because Coach Sampson touched on that regarding JVA Francis. And JV's development had a, his first double double of his young career, and he believes in JV's future and the progress he's made. Because as Coach Sampson said, we develop our players. That's one of the things we do here on with the staff is develop. We recruit guys because we can believe we can coach them up and develop them. And JV is another example of that. So you saw his footwork. He had a nice spin move, left hand left in the paint. So another example of the big man getting better offensively. Freshman Terrence Arsenal. Shot the ball well from three. Coach Samson believes in Arsenal's three-point ability. He thinks he'll be better as the season progresses. As a freshman, got to be consistent. That's one thing that freshmen and young players have to develop is consistency because we saw it tonight in the other direction. Jairus Walker, freshman, was not consistent. Played great Friday, not so good tonight. Lack of effort, early fouls. Coach Samson said, we got depth this year. You don't bring the effort, go sit down. Yeah, Terrence looked really comfortable as well. And to, and to your point, Jarius only played 13 minutes, and Jay one only played 12 minutes. You look at um, the last game, they were the two leading scorers. They carry a team. And then tonight, it's the guard play, and that just goes to our point. But Terrence, he looked really, really comfortable. I was impressed with his ability to beat his man off the dribble and get inside and create contact and get to the free throw line. Another thing that Tremont does really well, you mentioned that, Andy, as well. And so Terrence, um, he's taking another step. But just look First game of the season, we were highlighted with the freshman of Emmanuel Sharp coming off the bench and scoring in, what, 11 to 12 minutes. Now Terrence um, got hit, kind of, kind of coming out party. His first game in double-digit points, he played 22 minutes, three of six from three, shot six free throws. He missed three of them, but also got five rebounds. And I'm very impressed with his length and his his um, rel um relentless to get those rebounds, whether it's tip balls and everything. I guess there's just the culture. That's what they say in – and man, he, he's picked right up and caught up to it really fast as far as just that energy and uh, um, attention to detail going to get the rebounds and just competing on every position. And I'll say real quick, Andy, I don't mean to cut you off. It's down, you said it point blank. It's the culture. And with the added depth that the Houston team has this year, if there are guys who are not performing up to the culture, not grabbing rebounds, not diving on the floor, not playing good defense, there's somebody on the bench who will get it done, and Coach Sampson will sub that person in to take, take the person out. And tonight, one of those guys was Jess Walker, Ramon Walker. Interesting note, Coach Sampson mentioned it to us post game that Ramon Walker, they've worked on Ramon as a backup four because he believes that Ramon can do a good job, good enough job, solid job defending at uh, some fours in college. 
So Ramon, first half, Ramon was aggressive, as he always is. Six boards in the first half. So Ramon Walker, when the Cougs go four guards, Ramon be that that uh, that guy at the fourth spot defending the power forward. So more versatility, more options for Houston going forward. Definitely think he's strong enough the way the way he's built. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a good tidbit that you can only get on less race Cougs. Absolutely. And that's the perfect segue because like Chris mentioned, I think that's um, again, focusing on that comment that Kelvin Sampson said, the luxury that they have this season. He mentioned how last year he felt like he was coaching with his tied with one tie, uh, with one hand tied behind his back just because of one first, obviously the injuries of the story of last season. They were really shortened when it came to the rotation. So at times he said it, uh, Kelvin did post game after this game. Oh, at times last season, he had to worry about um, foul trouble. He had to worry about his players getting tired and, you know, they did have moments like tonight where people were struggling. He didn't really necessarily have that luxury to be able to sub uh, someone that's having a bad game and put in someone else because they didn't have the depth due to injury last season. And this year, the complete 180, something that we mentioned uh, throughout previous Left Rage Coup. We've mentioned it in previous podcasts with regardless of talking sports, you name the show um, heading into the season. And that's something that, that's really been a bonus. And it's something that's shown. I know Kelvin kind of talked about in regards to the points where – He's not. He's never really gonna. I mean, at the end of the day, he doesn't really care who scores the points. He said he didn't know who was leading them and scoring until he saw the 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 step look that they had in front of him. Um, he cares more about again those culture plays, the rebound. He was gonna go after loose balls. Ramon Walker, surprise, surprise, he was on the floor again during this game. Um, and to your point in regards to the interesting thing where Jarris Walker got in foul trouble early, Jawan Roberts or Jawan Roberts got clocked in the elbow, which caused him to start bleeding. Um, the way Kelvin Sampson described it, he started bleeding a lot now. Um, that's the reason why he only played roughly 11 minutes, is what Kelvin said. But they were able to have that luxury. If they had been playing Ramon Walker as a four and during practice, and they were able to slide him in there, uh, go to four guards with Ramon Walker being at that four position. And most importantly, he said that he was able to go in and get six, six rebounds. So plug and play, whoever goes in, uh, they know what the expectations are. They know, again, kind of the phrase that Kelvin has trademarked during the early part of training camp and into the season, making plays that impact winning. Uh, but on that note, I'd once again like to give a shout-out to the primary sponsor for Let's Rage Coops, the Saxonian family. Steve Saxonian is a Saxonian family. Chris, I want to thank you for being able to, to get him as the primary sponsor. Obviously, of course, our other sponsors in the Hoop and Hollow Houston Cougars, uh, Micro Collective, they are the entity behind the Star Pizza commercials, the Anthony Jones Sack Ave commercial that if you do watch Let's Rage Cougs, the football version, you'll get to see it. Um, there's a good chance you've seen the commercial and then Star Pizza, of course, um, various different locations across the Houston area. Chris, one of these days we will be from a Star Pizza and we'll be getting a pizza from Star Pizza. And obviously, of course, the Fritz Kennel. Big shout out to the family owned and operated business that specializes in dog and cat boarding. And on that note, we'll segue over to Calvin Sampson, a clip post game of what he had to say. He'll talk about various things throughout the game, in particular, Tremont Mark and really uh, how we talk about he didn't, he doesn't count last season as his sophomore year. He counts it. This is his first, and this is something he said multiple times. For Tremont Mark, he considered this is his first, um, his first semester of a sophomore year, even though he did play last year, just because he missed most of that season with injury. He's going to talk a little bit about JVA Francis as well. Tremont's, in a lot of ways, a first semester sophomore. You know, he backed up, didn't play a major minutes his freshman year, but he's a integral part on a um, really, really good team, Final Four team. And last year was out all year. I don't care how many games he played, he was never there. Um, yeah, I think an early scrimmage, uh, you played good in that scrimmage early, right? And then right after that, he was done. Uh, looking back, you know, you always, hindsight's always 20 20. Probably should have shut him down after the first week or two of the season. So he just hasn't played in over a year, you know, and he's played three times games this year. Um, but still, as coaches, uh, we, we learn to uh, just trust the process. Um, as long as these kids are working and um, have the right attitude about preparation every day in practice, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy being good. It's really hard being good. It's hard to win a game. It is really hard to win a game. I tell my assistant coaches that all the time. You won't realize it until you become a head coach. Um, but Tremont has always had a fantastic attitude. 
Uh, he's very coachable. Um, and from what I've got here, if I had told him to run through a brick wall, he'd want to negotiate. He, he wouldn't know. Me from Dickens, what you mean brick wall? Craziest thing I ever heard of. Go. Now he'd say, can I get a run and start? But that means he's bought into our culture. So, uh, but it's a process. He's nowhere, you know, he's still got a lot of things he's got to improve on. His defense got to get better. Um, he's, he's a much better rebounder than what he's rebounding right now. Um, but uh, just keep working at it. He'll, he'll, he'll get better as he goes. Tremont, kind of building off with what Calvin just said, do, would you feel right now, just body wise, in terms of comfort, 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 comfort level, um, is this the best that you've had over the course of the past year, just in terms of your body and then just being able to be? I know you haven't, you didn't play last year, but you've been around Houston for, for a few years now. Yeah, I'm just happy to be back on the court, playing with my teammates, grinding out every, every minute that I'm out there. Uh, especially, I'm happy to be back on the floor. Chris, go ahead. Coach, this is what are your thoughts on the game ZV here today? Uh, we've watched him in practice. He's, he's coming. You know, there's, there's, there's a reason why we do what we do in recruiting. Where the uninitiated and then not have a clues or asking about the transfer portal, we had JBA. There's a reason why. We, we like to develop our own. You know, um, our kids needed to play this year. I just, it, can you imagine have we brought in somebody to transfer portal and he sat over there like he did last year? Wouldn't have gotten to play. He needs to play. You know, um, JBA is going to be really good. I mean, he is. We, I watch him last year in practice. He wasn't very good, um, but he was raw. He's not nearly as raw now. He's gotten better. Um, but he gets to play behind Reggie and J1 every day. Last year he got to play behind uh, J1, Reggie, Josh, and Fabian. Josh and Fabian left. We moved uh, some guys up. Didn't bring anybody in because we, we trust our process. We trust what we know. And um, uh, so watching him improve uh, as he goes. Now he's got to learn to be consistent uh, with his intensity and how hard he plays every day. He's not there yet. But like tonight, he got tired and he reached up and grabbed the light switch and pulled it off. You know, he saw them get a bunch of offensive rebounds there at the end. The JVA is tired. <laughs> he's not used to playing that many minutes. But that happens. Um, but uh, he's, uh, he's got ways to go. But uh, he's on his way. He's, he's going to be a good player here. Well, on that note, Dan, I want to go to you first, just because it's your first time being able to listen to those comments. But I mean, something that, that we've touched on, I mean, touched on a couple of things, but specifically in regards to JVA Francis, I think the, the sound bite there that stuck out to me in regards to Francis was he needed to play this year. He couldn't, had they been able to transfer or gotten a transfer that would have been big, he wouldn't have been able to play as much, and he would have been sitting in, on, on the sidelines again. I think that's the one that stuck out to me, but what are your overall thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's what stuck out to me as well. It, <clears throat> it's recognizing um, in practice, like um, he just mentioned there, and seeing that, okay, this player is ready to produce and needing to get him out on the floor to get that experience. And that's part, um, I think, that goes ties in with the culture and being able to retain players because, you know, Houston doesn't lose many of players um, to the transfer portal. We look at other schools and compare them to other schools. And so, um, and that was one of the players when I'm watching the game, I'm thinking about this team develops every single position at an elite level because you saw this glimpse of the potential where he has, whether he's um, drop stepping, pivoting, and finishing with a hook shot. You see how he's contesting and changing multiple shots, whether he gets the block or not. And then he's just rebounding. And so I think he has a bright future. And I think he's going to be more than just an alley-oop guy or a guy that just catches lobs or just dunks. I think he has a great skill set. And he's with I'm an elite coach that was going to develop him and, and, and then believes in him. That's one thing I think also that makes his coaching staff so great. They enable their players at, at all positions. They enable you. We're going to put you out on the floor regardless of – the night, I mean, regardless of any night, if you're playing good, we're going to play you, and we're going to enable you to do your game and put you in the best position to succeed. 
And and with that, I we you know the few minutes we do get to see in the practice, JB Francis is working on his footwork, spin moves, reverses, finishing around the basket over and over and over. So he's got a quick first step, quick spin move. He's just got to fine tune it, get more consistent with it. So it's coming. He's got to, I mean, the future is bright with him. You can see the potential with him. And then bringing in next year's talented players, they'll work on them, develop them, help them get better and improve and just continue sustaining this program. And that's a big reason why it's a nationally relevant men's basketball program. If I could add one more thing, and this point seeing into next year, Reggie's going to be graduating. And so that's going to uptake his minutes even more. So that just goes into the point with Coach Sampson, seeing the future, knowing, okay, this player needs to get minutes and experience. Not only that, he deserves it. We've, we've seen him develop, like he mentioned, in practice. And so it's just a, my hats off to um, the Coach Sampson and the whole staff. <clears throat> one of the things, I mean, the other thing that stuck out to me uh, in regards to him specifically talking about JVA Francis is how high he is on him. And I mean, you said, obviously, he, he's not there yet. He has to work. And, and something that he did mention is really has to work on being that consistency. But I mean, that's high praise. He said he's going to be uh, one of the good players at this program for Houston. He's going to be a key contributor down the road. And like something that all three of us know, Kelvin Sampson doesn't just give around praise often when he says something, he really means it. And I mean, short, uh, in short, in a short burst, I mean, he only played 16 minutes, 32 seconds, but to be able to get uh, most important for Sampson, what he's going to care about, 11 rebounds, four of them were offensive rebounds. And then he did manage to be able to put up 11 points to get that double double in, in 16 minutes, just being able to make the most out of your opportunity. Um, Chris, were you going to say something? I was going to comment on some of the comments we're seeing, uh, like about Malik Wilson. This is me talking, okay, audience, <laughs> Dayon, Andy. I am I would not be surprised if Malik Wilson is redshirted, okay? He hasn't seen time yet. I think first three games he's he's been in street clothes, not even, you know, UH warm-ups. So most likely he'll be redshirted. And Malik hinted at that to me, I think to Andy as well, and, in one of our post-practice media sessions. So he's brought in to develop for next year. So that's in the pipeline, right? That's why you see Tremont Mark as a lead guard when Marcus and or Jamal go to the bench to get a rest because Malik is not going to play this year. But that's just more depth. <laughs> you don't need him this year. <laughs> just, just consider that. But Malik is an athlete right now. He's not a great three-point shooter right now. He's getting better defensively. He's going to improve. And then next season, I think he'll be relied on for consistent minutes. And then you just de develop the younger players coming in next year. But that's – we can talk about it. Jamal Shedd has yet to make a three-pointer in these first three games. And the Cougs are still averaging 80 points a game. <laughs> I mean, Jamal Shedd doesn't need to score points this year. He got Marcus Sass and Jamal Mark to carry the load offensively in the backcourt. Jamal Shedd's job is to play defense and facilitate. He can do that all day. The different – Options in the front court. This team has more versatility to score, to play defense. And the positive thing that we could really get from Coach Sampson about the team's first three games overall is he said this team is getting better. So for Coach Sam to say that, that's all that matters. He's not worried about a grade and you know A, B or, or whatever. You know. He said this team is getting better. That's what we as followers of the team and the fans – just rely on that, count on that. The team is getting better. So I'm looking, I'm looking through at some of the comments. And you know, Chris, you brought up that good point in regards to Jamal Shedd. He they haven't really needed him to be that scorer. And then again, going back to just overall, I think it was something, it was the first game where we really got to see the depth in regards to the front court. And I'm looking at a comment that King Jaja said. They do have various Bowser as well for depth. He hasn't seen the floor for Houston. I, I believe he hasn't seen the floor this season. He, he did it tonight. Um, 
But what I want to steer the conversation to is something we touched on earlier, but Ramon Walker as a four, I found that really interesting and intriguing, um, especially the last few years. You've never really seen Houston play four out with a one only one big, especially, I mean, last season, they didn't really have that luxury. And you had Josh Carlton and Fabian White. Um, you weren't going to necessarily need to go four out one in most of the nights. But what, what kind of, I guess, extra layer does that bring for Houston to show Hey, they can go nights um, where they can just go four guards, one big, and we saw it tonight. They're not going to lose anything in regards to the rebounding to crashing the glass, um, which is one of the key reasons, as Samson said, is the reason it worked that they were able to go with Walker at the four. That's the key. First, first, as long as they can rebound out of that four guard, one big lineup, because they're going to defend. Whoever's on the floor, they're going to defend. But if they can rebound out of that four guard lineup, it will last and play good minutes in a ball game. You know, um, Connor Vanover, 75 young man from All Roberts. Cougs didn't really, he had an impact early, but not much of an impact. And then they can stretch him out. If they go four guards and spread out the offense high, who's going to defend it? The big out down low? Well, that big goes out mid range. It opens up the penetration for everybody else. So it's more flexibility, it's more versatility in the wings and guards that this team has. Darius Bowser is a big man in case of foul trouble. He's, he's a big man to be physical if it's necessary. He wasn't a scorer at his previous stop. He's just here to be a body, a physical presence in practice, throw some weight around. Don't look for him to be an offensive threat in, at all this season. That's not gonna be his role. His role is to adjust and adapt to the culture. If Coach Sampson says, Darius, go in and get some foul, yes, sir, coach, <laughs> I'll get that done. And then come back and sit down. Yep, and um, I kind of, thought that this team would play some full guard out, but I didn't think that Ramon would be at the four. And so that's very enlightening to me. Um, I definitely think he can do it depending on the matchup and not, not as like a, a, a bigger scoring power forward, but on any given night in college, I think he can guard fours and you know he's going to compete. It was back-to-back -back plays where he, he drew consecutive charges on back-to-back -back plays. So you know he's going to compete. He's going to rebound. I don't know if I've seen any player that plays – as hard as he plays on every good possession, kind of reminds me of Wessel Westbrook as far as that intensity. It's like one, one speed, 100 miles per hour on all, every time he's on the floor. And so I, I think that's something to keep an eye on. And But I think you get the length, though, because you, if you if Terrence is out there or if that whatever forwards out there with the Tremont, you still have that good length of guards that can rebound. And just mentioned, um, back to Coach Sampson clip, um, Tremont's averaging, what, six or seven rebounds a game, and Coach Sampson – and just hold him to a higher standard. Like, look, he's not rebounding as good as he can. And we're just holding like, hey, you can rebound even better than that. You can average eight or nine or maybe even ten rebounds per game. And so, like you guys um, mentioned, if the rebounding is there, I think no matter who's on the floor, this team is versatile and can play four guards. And even um, Jarius is really almost like a guard. I mean, he has the length and the skill set. He has the skill set of a guard, but he he's a big with his um, length and his stature. But – Man, th this team is going to be scary. And real quick, Andy, before you add your two cents, let's think about this four-guard possibility. Ramon Walker, Terrence Arsenal, Tremont Mark, and Marcus Sasser. Length, scoring, rebounding, defense. And then you plug in Jarris Walker, Dewan Roberts, if you just want to get some physical presence, Richard yep. Chaney. <laughs> the first totally is there. So we're media. Okay, we got to maintain the media and objectivity, mm -hmm. but we can see the versatility and the potential that this team has this season. And I think that's the, that's the key word right there. The possibilities are endless. With really up and down the roster, you look at just the different uh, lineup combinations that can be brought up. That's the key word so far: versatility. Now, in regards, Chris, you did mention that objectivity, so we do. Um, I do want to focus in on Jarris Walker, who, like we touched on, um, really struggled and, and something that Calvin Sampson talked about. Um, the thing he said, the one the one thing that is consistent in regards to freshmen is the inconsistency. Obviously had a good night against St. Joseph on Friday night. He led the team in scoring. He had eight rebounds um, tonight. And really those two early fouls really um, kind of ruined his mojo um, early on. Um, and then whenever he only played 13 minutes over four from the field, 
Um, and one of the comments, and I'm going to see if I can find it real quick, but something that I saw just from observation, and Chris, I'm curious to get your two cents on this. Um, there was multiple times when Kelvin Sampson got on him on defense, not being able to close out. Um, and that's something that it, you, I'm trying to get that clip so we can hear from Kelvin Sampson. We should be able to get it towards the end of the show. But something he said in the past, that's non-negotiable when it comes to rebounding, defense, and taking care of the ball. And uh, he only had three rebounds in 13 minutes, over four. Uh, but really, what Kelman doesn't care about the offensive side. What he cares about is being able to to be effective on defense, and that's something that it seemed like Kelman was getting on him multiple times throughout the game. Yep, the, the first three minutes of the second half, the team was sloppy with passes, poor defense, and not secure rebounds. Coach Sampson subbed him out because and Jarris one of those guys he took out because he was not getting the job done defensively. And Jarris has the talent, but Jarris has to buy into the culture, the Cougar culture, play tough all the time. He says it a little bit to us here and there, but he's got to do it game in, game out to match his talent. If he does that, then the sky's the limit for him. But if he doesn't with this year's team, if he doesn't play hard, doesn't close out on defense, He'll sit down <laughs> and somebody else will come into the game who will play hard, will play defense, will dive on the floor, will get after it defensively. Jerry has to realize that. There are other options on the team. Coach Sampson said to us many times, he doesn't care if y'all a five-star. <laughs> Whatever. You come here, you're going to play our way. It's non-negotiable. And also, he just had an off night because he passed up way too many three-point shots. He was hesitating on his shot too much tonight. Just one of those games, you know, freshman game. He had a bad game. We'll see what he does on Wednesday against TSU. Real quickly, uh, Dan, before you jump in, that's something that uh, – and I don't know, it might just be something it's, – it's still early on. They're barely three games in. But that's something I've noticed. I don't know if it's something at home. It seemed like he's been more hesitant in the two home games in regards to shooting. Could, could just be a coincidence. I don't know if maybe the, the student section behind gets some more hyped up. That is something I've noticed. And it's something you didn't really get to see on Friday – against St. Joseph. Now, he did make his first shot, so he did look much more comfortable throughout that. That could be something, again, going back to just him being a freshman, he has to be able to get, uh, I mean, going back to that consistency level. But, Dayan, I'll toss it over to you. Yeah, I was just going to say, remembering back to the first game with Coach Sampson after the game, he was like, that's the hardest if Jerry has played ever. And so it, it's just like he said, sustaining that high level of play. But um, – I'm not really worried about it. The basketball is up and down. Look at last game, Marcus didn't have a good game, and, um, and, and still they won. And, and so it just goes back to the depth of this team. They could beat you in any way. And so um, he's still learning. He's still gaining experience. He's only a freshman, and he's only going to go up. He's only going to get better and better. Watch film. They're going to critique him hard, coach him hard. And that's why you, in my opinion, you come play for Coach Sampson because you want him to bring that best out of you. You want him to challenge you, and you're going to trust that he's going to do those things to prepare you to get you to the next level. And that's that's what he said even, like, literally the first practice of the season whenever he spoke to reporters. He said that's the reason he came to Houston. He wanted to get Coach Card, and he want, wanted to be able to grow. And that's something, like Chris, you mentioned, uh, and something that Calvin Sampson will reiterate, I'm sure, 100 times before this season is over, Oh, five star rankings don't matter. They, they, the first practice, he said, oh, there's not going to be anybody asking for an autograph in regards to who you are. So that's going to be something that it'll be an adjustment period as it goes on. And like you mentioned, Chris, like you touched on, as the season progresses, once he does start to click and find that consistency, that's really when it's going to be scary for opposing teams in the country. Exactly. None of us are worried about Jairus Walker. Nah. <laughs> Jairus in third game in his college career. He'll be fine because as long as he buys into the system, trusts the coaching staff and what they're saying to him, coach him hard, he'll be fine. He just got to match his natural ability, and he will do that. Can I have some? There's nothing wrong with that. He's three games in his freshman year. Yeah. He's been inconsistent. That's all. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Wednesday, he might have a great game, and Terrence might have a bad game. That's okay. And the Cougs could still win by 20. <laughs> that's, that's what this team could do this year. I'm going to predict they win by 20 against Texas Southern. Um, but, yeah, man, um, dang, someone just in my mind, why, as you were saying, Chris, yeah, when they come back to me, I, I'll say it. But, um, man, Marcus, 
Mark is really, really, really is very impressive to me as far as just his willing, his shot making ability, his timeliness of his shots. And I, I'm just thinking about in bigger games when Houston needs a shot like this shot before um, the first half. That was such a big shot, not even looking at the score. And just Jamal's uh, basketball IQ, knowing the time and awareness, knowing where Jamal is, everything, all the factors that go into it, and him getting it, being where, getting it up and making it. That shot like that just speaks volumes of where this team is going to be when the biggest games come in, it's close games. And so, man, I, I just can't wait till the competition gets stiffer and they continue to prove that they are one of the best teams in the nation. They keep climbing. Um, up the rankings and eventually probably be the number one team in the nation. And, um, and, to, and to start that play, you're talking about the end of the first half. Good point, Ken. Jay Francis blocked block the shot, blocked the baseline jumper. They got it going. Jamal caught the ball, raced up the floor, and then tossed it back to Marcus. Hit that three, top of the key. I mean, the defense led to that, that offense. So JVA shot blocking ability is something that they haven't had from an athletic big like that for a while. Just Chris, another just Chris. Just Chris Harris. Yeah. Chris Harris. yeah. And he's probably more athletic than Chris Harris. I think so. <laughs> so let's think about yeah. that as another yeah. tool in the toolbox. Mm-hmm. The comments yeah, by King Jaja. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and he had multiple times during this game where um, his craftiness, just to be able to finish around again, they, the, the Connor, and I don't want to butcher his last name, Ben, 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 o, ben over, but he's seven, five. And, it, there's not often I've seen one player t- make the other players on the court um, where they, he towers over them, but he towered over everyone on the court. Like, Mark, he made Marcus Sasser look like how Chris and I look whenever we're interviewing the players. Like, that's how he made um, everyone on the court look. But I think that's what made it more impressive where, again, going back to that point I made earlier, Tremont Mark and Marcus Sasser in particular, they weren't scared to be able to go into the paint. And Marcus Sasser in particular, he had a whole bunch of different times where he was able just be crafty and be able to finish that something. Uh, King Jaja, you made a great point. But on that note, well, final time, we'll plug in uh, our sponsors once again. Obviously, of course, our primary sponsor in the Saxinian family. Big shout out to them for being able to sponsor the first five men's basketball shows in regards to Let's Rage Cougs. Big shout out to Hoop and Hall, the Houston Cougars micro collective, the, the entity behind the Star Pizza commercial, which it's a good thing that they're right next to each other because. We are also sponsored by Star Pizza. If you're in the Houston area and want to, maybe you're getting out of work, you want to have a stop for pizza, maybe you're tailgating this, not this upcoming Saturday, two weeks from now, Houston football and Houston men's basketball will play on the same day. Um, and it looks like the football team will play in the evening. So there's a good chance that the men's basketball team will play in either early afternoon Um Make Star Pizza your go-to spot in regards to pizza. Bring it over to the tailgate. And obviously, of course, big shout-outs to the Fritz Kennel, the local family-owned and operated business that specializes in dog and cat boarding, daycare, and baths. On that note, I have one more clip from Kelvin Sampson. and this is in regards to him. And uh, specifically talking about the defense, like we mentioned earlier on, the non-negotiable portion, non-negotiable portion um, that he demands from his players on that end. And we watched them play uh, St. Mary's. We watched them play games last year. I mean, they've, they've got uh, four starters back. And that team can score. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Coach Mills was disappointed that they didn't play better, but they will. That's, that's the team that you can see. Um, um, first round matchup. I mean, they can, they can get to the NCAA tournament. They, they got some, they got a lot of guys that can score. Kevin, you mentioned the the defensive job that Jamal did, but just overall the three games as a team, Mm -hmm. you like what you see early on in terms of you know. I'm not I'm not I'm not ready to evaluate it whether I like it or not. You know, it's just we're just progressing. You know, I don't look at stats. I don't look at um, you know my my eyes are my stats. You know, um, you know we're 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 getting better at the things that we teach. And it's hard to be a good defensive team. It, it is. I, I don't want people to take this stuff for granted. If it was easy, then everybody would do it. But we really, really work at it. And, and, I, and I give a lot of credit to our kids and our staff because they all buy into it. So 
I think the hardest thing to teach in basketball is, um, and to get your kids to do, they all want to play offense. It's not like I recruited uh, the Dickinson Gator over here because of his defense. You know, uh, JBA is uh, a decent eyebrow fake, a decent eyebrow fake from hitting his head on the rim uh, when he got here. I mean, he went for everything. But now, get more discipline. Uh, they're learning to uh, be connected. Good defensive teams have one heartbeat. No, you have to have much better chemistry on defense than you do offense. Look at our Cisco's tonight. We spread them and drove it. That was our game plan. We weren't going to have a lot of assist in this game. We wanted them to guard us in space. But that was by design, because we have guys who can go get it off bounce. But defensively, mm, you know, that's why some of the guys didn't play as much as they wanted to. They're, I didn't like their commitment. Um, to how we defend and practice every day. If you're not going to take it to the games, then where are you going to take it to? You know, you, know, you learn and in, in, uh, practice, but you carry it over to the games with your attitude and uh, with your attitude and effort. You know, it's it's not. Uh, there are certain things with us that are just non-negotiables, and um, playing hard and defending, rebounding, and all those things are important to our program. Always Last like question. Let's go to Chris. Certain things that are non-negotiable, a whole bunch of different things that Kelvin Sampson touched on uh, right there. And specifically, well, that's the defensive portion. Uh, and again, going back to luxury um, and Chris, what you mentioned, if he doesn't like what he sees from player, especially in regards to defense, he's not going to hesitate to take him out. And like you said, it doesn't matter who that player is. Um, he's going to hold them accountable. Uh, exactly. And the players know that, but they need to know that if they're not, they will learn it quickly. <laughs> and Talking about Emmanuel Sharp, Emmanuel Sharp right now, his offense is way, way ahead of his defense. But he's a freshman, so that's to be expected. <laughs> and he's a very good three-point shooter. And right now, not much else. But he's going to play defense because if he wants to get on the court, he'll have to play defense and get better playing defense. That's what the system is that this staff has built. This is a matter of time. He may not play a lot of minutes this year. But next year, if time will come, he'll be ready to go. Yep. <clears throat> One thing that when I was, I was listening to that, and as I was watching, I was thinking about Tremont. That's why I said he looks to himself. Because like he just mentioned, I, I, I didn't recruit Tremont from Dickinson because he could play defense. It's because his offense. And, man, I remember the COVID year before COVID hit, that playoff run that he had, he was averaging over 30 points a game in 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 um high school and i know that's different than college but as i'm watching this game everything he's doing is within the system of the offense and that and i'm like okay okay now that's what scoring 30 a game in high school translates to college in in the rhythm of the game knowing your spots picking your spots and not just trying to force and seek shots because you're the best player on the floor. So I think his basketball IQ has went up an even level, and he's playing in, in such a good rhythm. I mean, he he's um, knowing his capability. He's, he's very, very confident. I'm seeing him at times on TV and sit, tell him, like, man, he can't guard me. He can't guard me. And so, and Coach Sampson, back to another thing to his point um, that you guys just mentioned, what makes him such a great coach to me is he lets each game tell its own story. Most uh, most coaches that you watch, they got their certain favor. I don't know who you want to call it, favoritism or certain core players. Regardless of how they're playing, they let them play. Whether they did one for ten, or one for fifteen, it don't matter. Them just playing, man. Coach Simpson don't matter if you ain't playing hard. If you're not doing all the things that he would like you doing, he's gonna pull you out. And that's what makes a great coach, in my opinion, because as a player who's someone who played basketball my entire life, that's going to make me pay attention to detail on every single thing that I know I need to do. And I know if I'm not doing that, I I'm going to get pulled. And so, man, Coach Simpson is just a great coach. And his ability, like he said, I don't look at the stack sheet. I let my eyes tell me how to coach the game. And, man, that, that, man he's a great coach, man. He's a really, really – he's a great coach. And one thing Coach Sampson also said in the post game is this team has a lot of scores, but not a lot of guys who can lead the team in scoring. So, so that's, that's different. OK, I think you'd see Tremont could possibly lead the team in scoring. Marcus could. And then maybe, maybe Jarris Walker could at some point this season. But they have guys who can score, 
at different times. But Jamon is not going to be asked to score 25 points a game. Average, average that. But he could probably get, get to 25 if needed. If the matchups present themselves in a the game, he could probably do that. It's just another example of the versatility of this year's squad. The defense continues to improve. The offense will come and go because that's what offense does. But the Cougs' defense will travel. We know that. Opponents know that. Opponents can almost, coaches know, and at some point in the game, the Cougs are going to clamp down and give them fits. And then it's up to that team to rebound and try to match the Cougs' physicality. Not many teams can do that. And that's what makes the Cougs one of the best teams in the country. Absolutely. And just looking at it from a stat perspective, all Roberts, uh, they shot for the game 22.6% from the field. Um, and uh, again, something that we mentioned, Jamal Shed didn't necessarily have a scoring night, but something that Calvin Sampson made sure to point out uh, was his defense on Max Asmus, who he went one for 13 on the night, shot one of nine for three, really was a non-factor the entire game. Um from, from our perspective, and just overall, top to bottom, there was not, I guess, um, Carlos Jurgens went two for two. He was the best guy that had a shooting from the field. But especially in regards to, to players that played bulk of the minutes, that was not a good shooting night. And, I, again, regarding that defense, that's something that coaches, it's an identity thing that Houston has become to be known for. They know when they're going to play Houston, they're going to be in for a tough, now, uh, tough outing. And in regards to – Defense carries, going back to the elite eight of the season ago, Houston shot uh, very terrible from the field. I think, whoa, 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 is it one for 20 from three-point line against a Villanova team that, you know, they were coming into that game. They were one of the better teams in the country. They were one of the top teams in the country, and Houston had a chance that right there late in the game to be able to pull out a victory. And why something that Calvin Sampson has pointed out multiple times is because of that defense. Defense travels. Defense allows them to be able to be in every game uh, and being able to pull out a win, even when their offense is not there. Uh, but that's as we start to wrap things up. I'm going to go around and Dan, I'll go to you first. Uh, Houston returns to action just two days, Brett, or I guess tomorrow off day. They're back on Wednesday night uh, when they host Texas Southern at Fertitta Center. What are you going to be looking at for in that game? Jamal said, when is he going to knock down that first three-point shot? Uh, I, that's what I'm looking for. Houston, I don't, I don't think is never really going to be dependent on him to score, but I think there will be times in games where teams will force him to shoot that shot. And he he's shown that he can make it. He just needs to show that he can make it consistently. So uh, he didn't lack confidence. He shot it, never hesitated. But I'm going to be looking for him just to get off the snide and knock down that first three-point shot because when, when it's falling and when it does fall, it's going to open up the floor not only for him but for the entire team even more. And I'm, I'm looking forward to what uh, TSU's P.J. Henry does against the Cougs' backcourt. P.J. Henry helped TSU upset Arizona State Sunday at home at the H&P Arena, the win over a Pac-12 school. So TSU, they're going to be tired most likely because they play Oral Roberts Tuesday night before facing the Cougs on Wednesday night. So that'll be a factor as well. But let's think about all of this. We're talking about these first three games of Less Rage Cougs. We do not expect the Cougs to shoot 50% plus game in, game out. But if they just happen to shoot mid-40s offensively, with that defense that they play game in, game out, they're going to win a lot of ball games this year. So just keep that in perspective and see, see you guys here Wednesday versus Texas Southern. And that's – um, pretty much going to do it for today's episode. If you haven't done so already, first and foremost, thank you, Chris, for allowing us to use your uh, channel, this platform, to be able to be the home for Let's Rage Cougs, both uh, for the football and men's basketball. I'm surprised you haven't kicked us off for the football post game shows. I'm joking, uh, uh, Chris, but obviously, um, it comes, uh, it's the home of Let's Rage Cougs, and it was a joke just in terms of how that season has gone. Um, but once again, the final score, Houston defeats Oral Roberts 83-45. to Tremont Mark, a career high with 23 points, 8 of 12 shooting, 6 for 6 from the free throw line. Marcus Sasser added in an extra 19 points. Uh, like we mentioned, they'll be back Wednesday night for Cheetah Center, Texas Southern. Chris, I'll toss it over to you first. Where can people find you on social media? Follow me on Twitter at VHRReview. And then everything else, Instagram, TikTok, website, Houston Round Bar Review, and YouTube, of course. Houston Round Bar Review. 
always my pleasure to, to uh, be a part of the platform and onward and upward for Let's Rage Cougs and Cougs Athletics. Hey, I'm same for you. Where can people find you, sir? Find me all social media platforms at Day on Dunlop, like it shows on the screen. And can't end any episode without saying go Cougs, man. Continue to dominate. I'm loving what I'm seeing on the basketball court, man. They got to keep it up. We'll be back Wednesday night once again. Another episode of Let's Rage Cougs. Final score, Houston wins it 83-45. to 45.